growing up, this was the first time I got to talk about it with people and hear people's stories more directly. And people really shared with me what it was like to be targeted by racism. And that was huge for me. I needed that information so deeply. Um, and what it did is it, it gave me, it, it was empowering. It did is it gave me tools and, and the sense of power that I had power with my privilege. But it wasn't until the encampment that I actually felt like that was my fight as well. Until I internalized it and realized that I wasn't just a witness to what was going on around me, that I actually could be an active player. And not just could be, but needed to be. It was at the encampment that I found that spark. That I found that kind of twist in my reality that indeed I needed to do something to try and make my mark and create change in the world. I think that's true for most of us who go to the encampment. That's why we're here today. There's something that happens in that experience. Um, and I had grown up really not recognizing my own ability to oppress other people. You know, if you're really oppressed, then you don't really think about the way you treat women, per se, or talk about women. You don't really think if you're heterosexual all the time about the way you treat gays and lesbians, bisexuals. You, know, you don't think about your ability to oppress other people. And it was only through being in a collective with other people who had other issues who were dealing with other problems and being forced to recognize that my issues, my world, wasn't the center of the universe. That there were other issues that were just as important and that I needed to recognize the intersectionality of these various forms of oppression if I was ever going to really try and create change at all because they're all connected, you know? So it really helped me to develop a different level of critical thinking. And I came back to New York you know, with that fire, like, all right, I'm ready. I'm ready. What's, you know, I'm trying to find an organization where I can begin to do the work that I wanted to do. This is at the age of 16. Um, and it's kind of like that famous James Baldwin quote, uh, the victim who is able to articulate the situation of the victim has ceased to be a victim. He or she is a threat. That's kind of how I felt. I, I had an, an analysis of society that was guiding my actions. So when we were at the encampment, we had the great experience of being taught how to look at an issue from more than one perspective. And in particular, one example that comes to mind was looking at the arms race and looking at the way the American government spoke about the need to develop arms and the need to increase arms. And then looking at a Russian propaganda film, this is my recollection, that we were able to look at essentially propaganda from two perspectives. But that taught me how to take a subject and say, wow, this thing has many facets. I'm gonna turn it over and I'm gonna look at it in different ways. And I'm not going to make my mind up based upon what we would now call a sound bite. So, and that has stayed with me um, through my teaching and through my elementary school teaching, through my college teaching, I was, I was being taught how to do, have a principled reason to debate. And that's, that's still with me. And, and that's pretty, that's a pretty amazing thing to take away from a six week experience. Our charge was sit in this room and get together and figure it out and figure out how to work with each other. We, we know we're all from different places. I mean, this is what I remember believing and I, I think I'm accurate in saying this, that we came from different religious backgrounds. We came from different uh, layers of the socioeconomic strata. We came from different geographic areas, you know? So it, it was the beginning of saying, hey, you know, you've got to work it out if you want to get along in this world. And then years later, and I mean many years later, I began to understand the extraordinary gift that I had been given by being exposed and working and living with people who didn't not just look like me, but think like me, people that came from different cultural backgrounds, people who had different values. That was, that was vitally important to helping me become who I am as a leader, as a community member, as a family member. It made me more empathic. And I've said it for years and years and years. I've told hundreds of people, there's not a book, there's not a film, there's not a lecture that I could possibly have learned that from.
You can only learn that from experiential learning, from being embedded with people from different backgrounds. It's the only way you can possibly learn it. The encampment, um, I met so many different people from all over and I'd only been in like South Dakota in a small rural community so I didn't really know much about what else was out there and I learned a lot from um, the young people I met and I learned about like all the different issues that were going on and how to pay attention to like what's going on in government and how things work and how things work to divide us and, um, and how we can work to reunite each other and um, help each other as you know human beings should but um, <laughs> I think the encampment it gives a voice to people who don't often think that or believe that they have a voice or know that they have a voice and when young people come they can just be you know represent their communities and be whoever they want here this is a place to be yourself um, and be uh, re revel in your culture and who you are and share that with other people your age so I think that's why it's important for young people to come to or to have an encampment. What, um, what the encampment um, enabled me to uh, to experience was actually um, community, community and communion with other with other youth who um, who came from other parts of the country, who are also in some way engaged in, with their own community, um, and they weren't just talking about what the latest, you know, uh, show was and um, or the latest fashion trends. They were actually talking about. Um, um, about things that mattered to me um, and things that mattered to me before and now continue to continue to um, uh, to land uh, in uh, race in class in the different you know in all the things that um, that you know I, I it, it's interesting because I can't you know it's these are lenses that I don't really take off Okay, I was in the, the 93 class. I got in by my uncle Clyde Phillips. I believe he was class of 53. I got to experience a lot of things outside of my culture. It's definitely helped me along the way. I went to the encampment in the Bronx in New York in and, and the late 70s. I don't know what year. I was active in voting rights recently, and I volunteer for um, an organization called the Op-Ed Project, which... Um, fosters op-eds from um, women, minorities, you know, people whose voices are not normally, you know, op-eds have been predominantly white men. So we, we coach pe other people to write op-eds and I love doing that because the op-eds are really different than what you've been reading. Why do I think the encampment is important today? Um, when I look at the direction that our country has taken over the course of the last 10 years. Um, I think that it, we've headed down some dark roads and I think that the, the work of the encampment has always been to try to get people to work together to steer us toward the light even though we're not directly putting on the encampment hat in, in the day-to-day -day work that we do and, and screaming out encampment to the people that we're talking to, we are the embodiment of the encampment in the work that we do. And that is what we have to show the young people that they are the encampment. They are the encampment in the same way that we are the encampment. And that's why the work of the encampment is so important.